Terrestrial Radio on AM 1430 WBEV, as uh, well as the, those of you joining us on Daily Dodge under the video tab. Uh, for those of you listening on the radio, you are welcome to uh, check us out, uh, the uh, the new video tab at dailydodge.com. Uh, this video will pop right up, and you'll be able to watch community comment live if you so desire. Uh, take a moment here to introduce the guests that we've got on this first segment of community comment today. We want to welcome into the studio with Church Health Services, Thea O'Connor and Bev Bielek. Thank you very much much for joining me today. Thank you for Thanks, having us. Uh, so uh, Church Health Services, uh, for those not familiar, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is you guys mm -hmm. do? Well, Church Health Services has been in the Dodge County area for 25 years, and what we do is we provide medical, dental, and mental health services to our area low-income population. Um, currently, our medical clinics are of a walk-in variety, so we have two or three times a month a scheduled walk-in clinic where somebody can come in. Um, and have whatever might be bothering them that day uh, addressed. If it's something that's a complex medical issue, we will help them get into the local area clinic system. Um, if it's just something, you know, for instance, you fell down and you know you have a finger that's feeling a little bum, we can look at it and make sure that it's not broken. And if it is, then refer you to the hospital to get that taken care of. Um, our dental clinic is um, currently open Monday through Thursday. We're open 10 hour days. And we provide uh, dental services for children and adults. So basically zero to, you know, whatever age you might be, as long as you have no commercial dental insurance. And there is always um, an income eligibility requirement. So what that is, is anybody who's 200% of the poverty level or lower would be eligible for our services. And this year, uh, the state of Wisconsin has set 200% of the poverty level at just a little bit above $50,000 a year for a family of four. And so quite a few families in our Dodge County area actually are eligible for our services if they have no uh, commercial insurance. Now you've recently expanded the services that you offer at Church Health Services to also include mental health programs. Tell us about that. We do. We have been giving some level of mental health through our medical clinic, uh, but we really realized in looking at our patient population and the needs that they have that there was a much more extensive need for mental health services, and so we developed our own mental health clinic. Uh, we currently have two uh, counselors that are on staff, and we have one volunteer. And basically, we provide whatever mental health services that they need. Um, we also have a mental health in the schools program. And this was a program we started with the Beaver Dam School District a couple of years ago. We're actually on our second full year uh, being in the schools. We currently provide mental health services to the children in that district um, we're at about 40 children. And what we do there is staff, counselors, social workers, staff psychologists, they identify children who have either a, an issue that is time consuming and takes up too much staff time, or it's a more complex issue than what staff might be trained to handle. And then they refer that child to us and then we go ahead and get the parental permission to treat and then we see them. One of the biggest issues people have for mental health services is access. And when you are a parent that's working, you don't always have the ability to take time off work to get your child to therapy a couple times a week. So that was really what got us started in looking at maybe removing that barrier. Um, you know, most parents want to do the best they can for their kids, and I know it's a heart-wrenching decision to have to balance, do I miss a day of work and potentially put myself in danger of losing my job or denying access to care to my child? It's, it's a really tough decision that our parents in our, our local communities are making. So that was really one of the driving forces behind us approaching the school district and saying, hey, how, how could we help this? Um, and remove that barrier. So uh, when we first started this program, we had a couple of kids, and like I said, we're now up to 40. About three weeks ago, we also started providing the same service to the Wapan Area School District. They reached out to us because they are having a similar issue. Um, so, you know, they just really wanted to know if there was anything that we could do to help them. They had heard about what we were doing in Beaver Dam and just, you know, wanted to explore that. Um, within two days of meeting with them, they had an agreement signed, and a week later we were in the schools and we had 19 kids, uh, and that is growing. The one thing that is different between the Wapan School District and Beaver Dam 
is Waupon has specifically asked us to develop an AODA educational program for students that would be a step before expulsion. So if you have any students who have been identified or have gotten in trouble for a substance abuse infraction, they would be required to go through this AODA education class before expulsion. So they could actually avoid being expelled from school. Obviously, if they didn't you know, go through with it or they failed mm -hmm. some portions of the requirements, they still then would be up to expulsion. But So that's something that we're starting to develop in cooperation with the school district and seeing how we could make that work for them. So um, that might be something that we could offer for the Beaver Dam School District in the future as well, if that works within their programs. Um, so, you know, this is... For us, kids are, are the ones that are really falling through the gra gaps in our community right now. You know, they're, they're suffering due to no decisions that they make. And so we're really very happy that we are able to provide those services for them, whether it's mental health or it's dental. And then that's always been a focus of Church Health Services mm -hmm. to try to get to those uh, those kids. And you've really expanded your offerings in school over the years. Yes. Well, and we really have always been the gap provider. And really up until recently, we didn't deal with children. And in medical, we do not because we've got great facilities and pediatrics uh, that are able to help them. So we don't see children for medical at all. It is really just trying to figure out where are they falling through the cracks and what can we provide. And can we provide it in a quality way? We don't want to provide it just to provide it. We want to make sure we're giving them the best quality care that we can. Um, and so um, in January of this year, we opened up the dental uh, for children and uh, mental health we have been doing for children in the schools for a couple of years now. Uh, tell us about the, uh, the clinic available, uh, availability that you have. Well, the clinic availability for mental health is there's no waiting. Um, if somebody calls us and a child is in crisis, uh, usually our therapist is contacting their parents within an hour. And uh, we have been able, we, for instance, we did have a child that was in crisis. The parent reached out to us, uh, and there was a requirement that there be a report uh, within 24 hours that they had been seen, and um, making that report to the county, and then working in conjunction with the county afterwards. So we really made sure that we interacted with the parent immediately. We got the child in according to what stipulations had been put on the family, and then doing whatever follow-up care and whatever collaborative work we needed to do with other agencies. Um, so with mental health, if somebody has an issue, they can call us, you know, like I said, we have three counselors available and there are plenty of time slots for those. Uh, emergency, like I said, we'll get them in right away. If it's just somebody who really just needs to start uh, taking care of their mental health and wanna make an appointment, then they can get in fairly quickly as well. Um, for dental, we have no waiting for dental either. Um, in November of 2017, when we hired our full-time dentist, we actually had a waiting list for dental of strictly adults that was over 500 people. Uh, within a month and a half, he had cleared out that waiting list. So we no longer have a waiting list. And so if somebody needs dental care and they once again fall within that 200% of poverty level or below, uh, they can go ahead and reach out to us and we can provide them dental services. Now with dental and mental health both, in addition to having that 200% of poverty level, they can have insurance, but it has to be the state Medicaid insurance. And this is what really gets confusing for people is our state Medicaid plan has HMOs of their own. So somebody can call us and say, well, I have Dean, am I gonna qualify? Well, you will qualify if it's the Medicaid Dean HMO, but if it's just the commercial that you get through your employer, no, you don't qualify. So there is a, you know, a little bit of a difference, but it can get very confusing. So if there's somebody out there that needs services and they're really not sure if they have an insurance plan that fits, just call us. You know, Everybody who answers the phone knows exactly what our qualifications are, and we will help you in any way we can get you to who can give you those uh, services that you need. As far as the uh, the medical opportunities in the clinic, what's that look like? Well, medical clinic, like I said, we have two to three walk-in clinics a month. They are uh, first come, first serve. Uh, they usually run for a two-hour period of time. Right now, we're averaging three or four patients per walk-in clinic. We've had them come all the way up from Watertown, even, um, not just the Beaver Dam area. Um, we will evaluate that if we see that we're getting more and more people coming. Mm -hmm. We have providers who are willing to provide more hours. 
But since this is really a new model that we're trying, we really tried to think of how long could one person sit with nothing to do without getting really bored. And so we figured two hours was enough for somebody to sit and wait for a patient to come in. Um, but luckily enough, we haven't had that problem. Uh, we've been, like I said, averaging three or four patients per clinic. And the only thing they need to do when they come in is just bring a pay stub. If they're not working and they're on unemployment, just bring your declaration statement from unemployment. If they're on SSI, just bring anything that shows what your income is that falls within that 200%. And that's all we require. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this week is National Volunteer Week, and uh, a lot of our guests on Community Comment all week long have some type of uh, connection to the volunteer world. I know, mm -hmm. Bev, you've been a uh, big volunteer throughout the, the course of uh, your life, and you have a number of activities planned at Church Health Services uh, this week in observance of that. Um, there are a lot of things going on, and we are happy to be the recipients of some volunteers during Volunteer Week, as well as uh, there are those of our staff that will be volunteering <laughs> throughout the week. Um, I think the biggest one that uh, we know about is the, the volunteer week activities that will occur on um, Saturday. There are a number of, of Earth Day volunteer activities. Uh, we are very grateful that we'll have a harvest team of volunteers coming to Church Health Services to um, beautify the landscape. Hopefully the <laughs> snow will be gone such that that can actually happen. If well, not, we do have They might plans. be shoveling some snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it could be snow removal, depending on what happens the next couple of days. Um, but we're very thankful. And one, one of our individual volunteers, um, Tom Gozinski, I'll mention his name because he probably has racked up the most volunteer hours <laughs> of many of our volunteers in the last year. He is a volunteer in our mental health counseling arena. Yes. He will be leading the Harvest Group on Saturday, and he, I believe, was the lead last year as well. Um, he's just a, a really great guy, and we're very happy to have him and his team coming to help us with some outside work. Uh, we also, this week, are trying to extend our thanks even more than we do, because I don't think you can ever thank anyone, or whether they're individuals or groups, enough. Um, so we're trying to thank our volunteers either via our social media or in person or sending thank yous. Um, there may be some snacks when they show up this week, just <laughs> as a little extra special thank you. How many volunteers do you have? You know, um, I knew you were going to ask me that question, and I don't have an exact amount. We have, we have approximately 175 wow. volunteers. They don't all volunteer all right. the time. They might volunteer for fundraising. They might be on a committee yep. uh, for that. They mm -hmm. can help at special events only. Um, you know, we have many events that happen throughout the year that only happen one time a year, mm -hmm. and there's a set group of people who do it every year. So it's not that we have 175 people traipsing through our building every week, but, you know, without their help, there's a lot of things that we would not be able to pull off. Right. Um, and, and I would totally agree we have a group of call-a-thon callers. Mm -hmm. We have a chair for that. We have an evening in Germany where we have a plethora of volunteers who are helping to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, we have volunteers that we will call on to help us out at a variety of events where we may have a booth and be participating. Um, and then we have our volunteer nursing staff, our providers who help with the health care. We have some volunteer dental staff at times. So kind of you name it, we have individuals who come regularly into the building and help out with whatever whatever it is that we may need help with. It could be anything from shredding paper to uh, helping us with development of promotional materials. It just depends on their expertise. We have a volunteer now who's helping out with some of our accounting responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So it, it varies. Uh, we try to match a volunteer up with what they're interested in doing. And while we greatly appreciate very versatile volunteers, we know that some people are less comfortable making phone calls, perhaps, yeah. or um, being on a computer and doing some online activities for us. So we try to fit that in with their desires as well as our needs. Well, what is it you're doing with Green Valley Enterprises? Uh, Green Valley Enterprises and Bright Futures are both organizations that have provided us with volunteers over the last few years. Uh, Green Valley clients haven't been coming to visit us as much uh, the beginning of this year because they've had some changes in needs that they need to accomplish with their 
clients, so we haven't seen them yet, but I'm kind of hoping we'll see them again. Um, and Bright Futures is coming twice a month and helping us again with pretty much any of those things I said. They'll help us with mailings, they'll help us with uh, intake packets that we need to have ready to hand to potential clients, uh, and anything in between. Um, they may be cutting little cards that we used to hand out or helping us prepare uh, grocery bag stuffers, variety of things. We're talking with Bev Bielake and Thea O'Connor with Church Health Services in Beaver Dam uh, here on AM 1430 WBEV, also on DailyDodge.com under the video tab if you want to watch a video of today's community comment broadcast live or on demand at a later time. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Faith Community Nursing, if you would. Well, our faith community nursing is what used to be called parish nurses. And what these are, these are nurses that are in a congregation. And what they do is they help address some of the needs of the congregation. And every church has different needs. Um, we have currently, we have nurses in St. Catherine Drexel, Peace Lutheran, First, uh, First Lutheran, as well as some volunteer parish nurses in various churches uh, we have one out in uh, one of the churches out in Alto, a church in Juneau. Just really depends. Not every congregation can afford to pay a parish nurse, but they still have a need. And so we look to see how we can still be a resource, how we can support them in that need. Um, parish nurses provide all sorts of things. They they can be holding blood pressure clinics after the end of a service, where people can come and get their blood pressures checked. Um, some of our nurses do home visits or hospital visits as an extension of the pastor. Uh, it's really whatever they need. St. Catherine, I know they've done exercise classes, they've mm -hmm. done yoga classes, they've done you know, all sorts of health and wellness things. The other thing that our community faith nurses do is they can provide health education programs. And so they can provide a presentation for the community or just strictly for a congregation based on specific topics like you know, dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, we have one coming up that is going to be talking about the difference between home care and palliative care. And I know Bev can talk more about what that presentation is going to uh, entail and when that is. But you know, these are things that a church, even if they don't have a parish nurse, they can call and say, hey, you know, we've, we have a wellness committee and we would like mm -hmm. to have somebody come in and give us a talk about diabetes. You know, what are the signs of diabetes? What are some health management things we can do for diabetes? And our parish nurses are trained to do those presentations. Um, so it really is just another extension of us as a faith-based organization to say, hey, you know, we're here and we have a responsibility to help the wellness and the care of the other people in our community. So. Bev, tell us a little bit about the home care or palliative care program. Yeah, this offering is uh, sponsored by First Lutheran and their health ministry team. And that'll be held Saturday, April 28th, beginning at 9, 9 a.m., almost said p.m., a.m., <laughs> be there in the morning. And the, the discussion will surround, is home care better or palliative care? What's the difference? Which one might be better for your loved one? Which one, if you're talking about yourself, do I need? And where would I go to get it? How do I obtain this service? Um, and what can I expect the cost perhaps to be? So lots of questions hopefully will be answered by the presenters that day. And they're asking that you uh, come in the entrance back by their parking lot. All right, and that is... Be greeted and guided to the location. <laughs> that is on April 28th. You guys also have a walk-in medical clinic on mm -hmm. April 26th? We do. We actually do have one this week, Thursday as well, from 8 to 10. And then we have one on the 26th. And it's exactly what I was talking about earlier. If you have a nagging cough that you, you know, is it a cold I'm not getting rid of? Is it something more? You just go ahead and walk in, bring proof of your income, and we will see you. Um, and then, like I said, if it's something that needs uh, more long-term uh, care, we will help you get into the clinic systems. Uh, we have several systems here in town that are accepting low-income patients and also can provide excellent care. And, you know, that was one of the reasons we decided to switch to this walk-in model is because we were really seeing from our patients very complex medical issues that, you know, having a family doctor or an internal medicine doctor as our providers couldn't address you know, uh, kidney failure or end-stage cancers, 
um, and some very complex um, heart issues, which is what we were seeing. And that's when we really looked to our providers in the community to see if there was a better way. Um, and there was. Mm -hmm. And so then um, we are able then to almost in a way triage people coming in and saying, yep, you know, we'll just give you an antibiotic, you're gonna be good to go. Or say, hey, you know, this is maybe something that a, a physician needs to run some lab tests and we will help you get into and make an appointment with one of those. So. You're listening to AM 1430 WBEV Beaver Dam. Uh, the uh, guests here with us today are with Church Health Services, Bev Bealake and Thea O'Connor. Uh, also joining us at dailydodge.com under our video tab. Uh, talking about uh, Volunteer Week and a number of the opportunities that they've got coming up at Church Health Services. In fact, you guys are going to be at a number of expos in coming weeks. Why don't you tell us about those? We are. <laughs> um, one thing that we like to do is of course, get the word out about our organization and, and what we do. So being that we utilize a lot of volunteers, and as I said, some of us do a lot of volunteering ourselves, yep. uh, we will have a presence at the Volunteer Expo that's going to be held this Thursday from 2 to 6 at MPTC. Uh, we also plan on having a booth so that we can let people know more about our services and interactions with the community at the Focus on Women, which is coming up April 26th at the Juno Community Center from 3.30 to 8.00. And we will have a presence at Senior Expo. That is the easiest one for me to find volunteers to help out with. Um, everyone yeah. lo loves the Senior Expo. Yeah. So Wednesday, May 16th, that's a bit in the future, and that'll be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Wayland Fieldhouse. Excellent. Very good. Now, uh, for the past several years, you guys have had an annual fundraiser that's been uh, thematically set in a different country around the world. Um, yes. Before we wrap things up today, Maybe you could tell us if you guys plan on doing that again this year. We would love to tell you that. Yes, indeed, we are planning on okay. doing it again. The uh, date is August 4th. It will be at the Old Hickory Golf Club. And the theme this year, we will be, have an evening in Germany. Ah, da. And it will not be all beer and brats. Okay. Just so you know. And some there beer will and brats, be some there beer and brats. There will be some of that. <laughs> Uh, we can't avoid that. We're hoping to do an official Oktoberfest like tapping of the ah. keg. Uh, but we also in want, in, in August, well, you can never That's get right. too soon. Come on, my back was out in January. It's snowing in <laughs> April, so what are we going to do? That's right. Yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> the, the general, uh, what we really want to want to help give people a taste of, because we all know our brats and beer and our polkas, but Germany is a much more diverse country than just that. So we, uh, we have a piano player who is going to entertain us with more than polkas, much more, and we'll be working with the Old Hickory catering staff to come up with some really great food to go along mm -hmm. with the beverages and the German theme. And the polka. And the polka. And maybe there'll be a polka. All right, very good. Uh, so again, that is August 4th. August 4th. And you'll be yep. hearing more information about that yes, in coming definitely, months, I imagine. Definitely, definitely. All right, uh, well, uh, ladies, before we uh, wrap up the program, maybe you guys can take a moment to uh, give us your, your final thoughts here. And maybe we could uh, kind of uh, look at that through the lens of uh, Volunteer Week and all that the volunteers have, uh, have done for you. Bev, we'll start with you. <laughs> he looks <laughs> left. Um, I think I'll expand throughout my, my working with Church Health Services um, and, and beyond that as well, but throughout that, that work, I don't think church health services would be able to reach the people and serve the people that it has without its volunteer force because its history is embedded in volunteerism. Um, the original providers, the founder, all volunteered their time to get church health services going, along with the pastor at Trinity who offered space for the clinics. Uh, we rely on a lot of volunteers to help us get done what we need to get done and we can't thank you enough and the community as we have seen it's probably been even better illustrated the last couple of uh, yeah. months with mm -hmm. all of the fire related events going on and other tragedies just how big volunteerism is in this community and we're thankful for that yeah well I think I'm gonna address it on a more general uh, note, you know, I spent a lot of time talking to people and organizations about what church health services does. And one of the most common questions I'm asked is, what can we do to help? And obviously, as a nonprofit, funding is always important. But I always emphasize that I don't want people to minimize how important the donation of their time is. 
because whether or not you have a half hour, an hour, or you have a certain day every week that you can give, this is valuable to nonprofit, not just ours, but for every nonprofit mm -hmm. in this community. You know, we all have a story, and we our story can touch an individual's heart, and if it touches your heart, you have a place within this organization and any other organization in our community. And we can never emphasize enough how important giving of time is. And you know, it's mm -hmm. and Bev summed it up very well. We would not be here today if it hadn't been for all of the volunteers who spent years bringing this organization to the state we are right now. You guys on volunteerdodge.net? We are. we are. Excellent. Very good. And yes. that's a good way to get a hold of you if folks were interested yes. in uh, finding more information. Mm -hmm. yep. well, I imagine they can uh, call you guys directly or check your website they out. They definitely can call us. Uh, our number is 920-887-1766. They can go on our website, which is churchclinic.org. We also are on Volunteer Dodge, not just our volunteer opportunities, but also any of our fundraising events that we have coming up. Uh, are also there. So we definitely are utilizing that resource. It's mm -hmm. it's a great new resource for our community. Well, thanks for coming here and utilizing this resource today. We do Thank appreciate it. Thank you for it. having us, Thank as you. always. Once again, uh, Bev Bealake and Thea O'Connor with Church Health Services. Uh, we do have to take a break. When we come back, another segment of Community Comment right around the corner. Volunteers. Think of how much richer our community and lives are because of people who care enough to volunteer. Volunteer to teach Sunday school, coach Little League, join service clubs and organizations, serve on committees and commissions, give blood to the Red Cross. The list is endless. This is Ed Shellen of Columbus with an invitation to volunteers who have served the Columbus community in some way without compensation. Columbus area businesses want to show our appreciation. This year, April 15th through the 21st is National Volunteer Week. On Thursday night, April 19th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the historic Columbus Fireman's Park Pavilion, we're hosting the second Good Neighbor Volunteer Appreciation Event with refreshments, door prizes, and music by the award-winning Mark Croft Trio, free of charge to all Columbus area volunteers. Join us Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fireman's Park Pavilion, and thank you for all you do. AM 1430 WBEV, Beaver Dam, streaming online at DailyDodge.com. Take advantage of the Countryside Ford Quick Lane Works Package. Oil change, tire rotation, and free inspection. Just $39.95. No appointment necessary. Monday through Saturday, Countryside Ford, 330 Transit Road, Columbus. And I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. You like me? You really like me? You can now like Daily Dodge on Facebook. Just go to Facebook.com slash Daily Dodge and hit the like button to get the latest local news, videos, events, and more. Everything you love about Dodge County and everything you need to know. Like Daily Dodge on Facebook.com slash Daily Dodge. So, are you going to see Nana's Naughty Knickers? Does this Nana want her knickers seen? No, it's the new Beaver Dam Area Community Theater production. It's about an enterprising senior citizen lingerie boutique owner who's spending her golden years in a most unorthodox way. Oh, I think I will see Nana's Naughty Knickers. So where does Nana keep her Naughty Knickers? Oh, under... Under where? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what? Show dates are April 27th and the 28th and May 3rd, 4th, and 5th at 7.30 p.m. and April 29th and May 6th at 2 p.m. Prices are $10, $15, and $17. When your little sweet law-breaking nanny is your roommate, you learn more than you ever could have guessed about what she's been up to in her golden years. Be sure to get your tickets today online at bdact.org or at Rechecks Food Pride in Beaver Dam. Will Nana get arrested or even worse, evicted? Get your tickets today to find out. Listen to WBEV online anytime at DailyDodge.com. Brought to you by Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. Here's a look at your weather eye forecast powered by Weatherology.com. A winter weather advisory begins at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and continues until 7 a.m. Thursday. Mainly cloudy this afternoon with highs around 35. Winds out of the northwest, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Lows level off around 27 tonight. 2 to 4 inches of snow tomorrow through tomorrow night. I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on your hometown station, AM 1430 WBEV. Currently, it's 33. Columbus Community Hospital, well into the future. Need a hip replacement? 
The average stay of Columbus Community Hospital is 1.8 days. Columbus Community Hospital, building a caring relationship, one patient at a time. WBEV WXRO's Cash and Karaoke Contest is underway. The following are general terms of the contest. WBEV WXRO's Cash and Karaoke is a series of individual qualifying competitions to be held at locations announced on WBEV and WXRO and our associated websites. Individuals perform songs on any genre karaoke style at various locations in the listening area. Participants are judged on various aspects of their performance outlined in the rules of the competition. Three acts are determined at each qualifying competition location. To advance to the grand prize final competition at the Thirsty Beaver on Saturday, June 9, 2018. One winner will receive a grand prize of $1,000 cash. Participants must be 21 years of age or older and may not be under contract with entities in the entertainment industry. For complete rules and qualifying dates and locations, visit DailyDodge.com. Hi, this is Brian Feller, service manager here at Surefire. A sure sign of spring is the great cleaning specials you'll find in your mailbox from Surefire. These are the lowest maintenance prices of the year for your cleaning and tuning of your HVAC equipment. We also have great deals on Wi-Fi thermostats and April air humidifiers. Give me a call today to get on the schedule before it gets hot. And if you're in the market for new equipment, then Tom Schwartz is your guy. Thanks, Brian. Now is a great time to upgrade your home comfort system to the quietest and most efficient system you can buy, Lennox. Act now and your rebates can total over $2,000 on select Lennox home comfort systems. Call Surefire today, your local Lennox premier dealer, online at surefireinc.com. Ten minutes after 1 o'clock from AM 1430 WBEV. Time for more of today's community comment. Here again is your host, Craig Warmbull. Well, thank you very much. And our guests on this segment of Community Comment are with Wayland Academy. They're in to talk about their new spring theater production. Uh, we've got here in the studio with us students Andrew Booker, Sydney Walker, Emma Vickers, Stephanie Najuro, and oh, did, I didn't get that right, did I? Jeru. Okay. The, 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 no. Okay. And, and we... We've got uh, Chris Allier Ientes here as well with us in the uh, the what? studio. Oh, Chris Ballier Mientes, excuse me. I thought those were silent no, letters no, as no, well. It's like ball of yarn. Ball of ball yar? Ball yar. Okay, ball yar. Ball very yar. good. Well, that's who we've got here on the program today. Thank you very much for joining us today, guys. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. So it's the again, again yeah. Thanks for coming. Some, we've got some new faces. Who's new? Who's never been here before? Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And you guys have both been here before yes. on this, so you know how everything works, right? Yeah. Well, we've never been here. No, no, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. new. You guys like the new studio? Yeah, this I like the pretty dog. Good. Yeah, the yeah, dog is. Here. Nobody knows show. that the dog is here. Maggie's here, uh, also joining us as well. We should maybe pan over to Maggie. Maggie is suddenly very uncomfortable now, knowing oh. that the spotlight no, that's is on her. The camera adds ten pounds. And, well, yeah, is that, are you? You're not worried about that. You're so slender. You don't. You don't have any of that to worry okay. about, Chris. Do you? Anyway, <laughs> next up, next so, question. Moving on. So, uh, <laughs> we, you guys got the big spring play coming up. Yep. Yeah. What? What? Uh, what is it? What's the name? It's Blythe, called Blythe Spirits. <laughs> wow. All right. Blythe. Are you guys off book yet? I mean, you know, you um, haven't gotten past some the title, of us are. it seems like. <laughs> Blythe Spirits. Blythe Spirit. What is Blythe? What does that mean? Um, well, why that's why usually not my why first I, question. Right, yeah. Why don't I just talk about what the show's about? It's a comedy. Okay. And it's about a writer who's trying to, uh, he wants to write a book about, like, the afterworld. Am I... Right on this? Yeah. Write a book about the afterworld. And so his thought is to bring in a medium um, to kind of help with that. And in doing so, he brings back the spirit of his first deceased wife. Oh. Well, and I'm sure she's a lovely woman. Oh, well, yeah, she's a she, she, she's a real gem. <laughs> who, who, play, who plays the, the? I am oh. the deceased wife. Hi, Sydney. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, is, is it fun to play a dead deceased wife? It is. Uh, the makeup will definitely be fun. So I'm just going to be completely painted gray, all gray outfit. So you'll definitely know who's dead and who's not, at okay. least in the play. Um, how, so. well, is that like? Is there a special paint for that? How does that work? We just got spray paint from just Walmart. Spray paint from <laughs> the, yeah. Walmart. Yeah. The, the local. It'll all be I'll be gray for the next month and a half. <laughs> okay. No, no, seriously, is there like a special kind of theatrical? Uh, uh, it's just yeah, it's just grease paint. Uh, just 
best grease paint. So. Head to toe. I mean, like you're going in the hair and everything. Oh uh, yep. Gray hair, mm -hmm. gray skin. Wow. How many how many shows is this? Uh, uh, well, we got a dress rehearsal tomorrow that's open to uh, seniors and students, and then Thursday night and Friday night, seven thirty in the Lindsay. Um, Auditorium at Wayland Academy. Okay, all right. So for three performances, you've got to yes. wear this gray grease paint, yes, as you call it. That sounds kind of fun and exciting. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about what we're just jump right in. Tell us about this uh, crazy deceased first wife. Well, so she wants to come back to get her husband back, and so she doesn't realize he's gotten remarried in that time, really. Uh -huh. um, and so she still thinks that he loves her the best. And is determined then to kill him off. Oh, so okay. He can be with her instead. So it's a comedy. Again. It is. <laughs> and, then she, yeah. and then and then she meets wife number two. Oh. And then wife number two thinks husband is crazy because he keeps talking to dead wife number one who's in the same room, but she can't see, can't see. wife number one. Stephanie, you are alive. Yep. Okay. Um, my character Ruth is, um, well, had a normal marriage until Elvira showed up, and um, until a. Elvira, Elvira, who is... Oh, you're the, Elvira. Yes, okay. the dead wife. I yeah, thought you said until wife. a virus showed up. <laughs> that would be terribly, <laughs> very dark comedy if that was the um, case. But basically, I'm trying to adapt with the fact that my husband is talking to, like, random areas in the house. But mm -hmm. at first, I don't realize that he... I think he's just going crazy. But then later on, I... Um, like know that there's another woman in the house and it seems as though he is more determined to make her happy than me so at this point I'm like fighting for his attention but with a dead woman so it's <laughs> <laughs> okay all right yeah. sure sure so Emma what uh, dead wife number are you well <laughs> <laughs> um actually I play the um housemaid Edith <laughs> um, yeah, I play the um, housemaid Edith, who um, secretly, without or without anyone's like, no one knows it, but she brought or she's able to see the dead wives. Even though you're alive, yes, you're able to see into the afterlife. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. You don't marry. No, anybody no, no, though. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. Not to give too much away. Any spoiler alert. So, uh, Andrew, what's he doing here? I'm just is a he, lazy bum, you know, walk just, up the street now. Um, is he the, uh, he's the husband. Yeah. You're, you're the, you're the, the one husband. with, you've got issues of, uh, of not just yeah. existing wives, Paranormal. but non-existent wives as well. well Have yeah, you ever been I, married before, Andrew? Is this, uh, is this uh, all uh, acting from the ground up? Well, in the, in the last show, I, I had a fiance. Oh, okay. So. All right, well, that counts. All right, but was she alive? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, so. you've got that there. So tell Definitely. us a little bit now. Who's uh, who? What what character do you play? Um, what's my name again? Charles, right? Yes. Yeah, you, <laughs> are you guys off book? Are, yeah. you, are you sure? Or is well, anything... I, I tend to not talk to myself. I just talk to the ah. per, uh, person only I can see. Sure. So which um, would be you? Yes. Yes. Okay. And, but so. you could see her, too. Yeah. And you can see Emma, just so we, yeah, I can, we can I can, I, I can see everybody. All right, all right, very good. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, tell us about your uh, Charlie. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'm mostly just trying to write my book at first. Um, and then, is it even in the first scene, maybe the second scene, all of a sudden uh, we have kind of a little seance um, that at first we all think it's a joke, and everybody else continues to think it's a joke. Um, but I think it's a bit more real when I start hearing voices, which I think at first is also in my head. Mm. Uh, later on, though, I realize it's not quite what it is. I see. So, are you guys at all worried that uh, by uh, actually acting out a séance, you might actually invoke the dead in real life, and they may well, somehow haunt uh, you from this point a, forward? We do have a Ouija board on Wait, set right you? now, just as a prop. <laughs> <Touch. laughs> very smart. That's very, very so. smart of you. Yeah. Yeah. Have, has anybody channeled anything yet? Well, you know, I had I had that shiver that went off. Well, we have a Ouija board here, actually. That no, I'm kidding. We're not gonna do anything with it. So, how the heck did you pick this play out, Chris? I, I I'm just um kind of the assistant for this show. Uh, Martha Kessler is taking the the show. Um, she chose it. We were originally going to do um, a wrinkle in time. A wrinkle in time, but the rights weren't available because of the really? movie that just got released. Yeah. So they'll probably do a wrinkle in time in down the road in, in the next year or two, but. 
So this came up as our second option, and it's been a fun show to watch them put it together. I've just been working on building the sets, and I do all the back behind the scenes things for to kind of support Martha, so she's not so busy. What kind of set have you got for this, Chris? Uh, it's a it's a it's a house set, and so we've got you know a fireplace, and I've hung my first set of French doors. Wow! I'm like, oh yeah, tools are <laughs> tool time. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, well, and uh, you know, I imagine the uh, the set again built in Lindsay uh, uh, Auditorium. Mm-hmm. Which is where this is taking place again. Uh, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. No, nope, only Thursday and Friday. No show on Saturday. Oh, okay. We have a Wednesday matinee. Wednesday matinee. Wednesday matinee. Okay. Um, seniors and students seniors only. Seniors and students, yes. Okay. And that's at nine thirty a.m. Nine thirty a.m. So you're just going to have students skipping school then to Not make our it. Students. Oh, okay. No, All our right, students have to be in class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you, you guys when you have a, a production like this. Um, you guys have a pretty heavy workload as it is with uh, with school. Where does theater uh, fit into your uh, to your daily routine? Uh, well, I mean, we're all fairly passionate about it, so in the end, it's not a whole lot of work. You know, we we enjoy doing it. Um, okay, it's it's a lot of work, but like I said, we enjoy doing it, so it's at least sometimes relaxing to some extent. Um, just something we can kind of escape from every once in a while. But. So if we were in the play right now, would this microphone just be floating and everybody would be unclear exactly? Because you're dead, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that, that, would, that would follow well, suit. Well, you'd see that microphone attached to like a gray blob. Oh, okay. Like, what the gray the, oh, that's right. You'd have the grease paint on yeah, and everything like that. We don't that. have special effects. We're not that fancy. Well, you've got a nice set. You've got grease yeah, paint. Good, we do. We you've do. got apparitions. Mm-hmm. Seems like you've got all of your bases covered so we far. Do. Now you just have to get an audience in there. We, we'd like a big audience. It's, it's a funny show. There's, it, a lot yeah. of, there's a lot of good um, humor in the show. Is PG? PG-13? What are we I would say about PG, PG. Okay. No, the, there's, 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 one, there's one curse word, but... I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put us at a PG. Don't say it here. Person. Whatever you do, we know. We don't, I know. I don't, uh, I don't want that fine. Yeah. Well, and plus we'd have to worry about copyright infringement too. Right. From, right. Uh, you know, doing a scene from the play. Right. And so, um, even a, though it's that one, there's word. another twist in the show where. Ooh, tell Elvira, us all about it, Chris. Elvira, dead wife number one, is trying to get husband Andrew with her to the other side and decides, she, does she cut the brake lines on the car? Something like that. She cuts the brake lines on the car. That's but unfortunately, true. It's a, it's a very romantic gesture. It is. It is. She just wants to be with him forever. And unfortunately, Andrew's not the one that gets in the car. Wife number two oh, gets no. in the car. Wow. So the show ends with two dead wives haunting him. Oh, and is that when you end up with Emma? Then is that no? Uh, okay. <laughs> no. All right, I wasn't sure how how that worked. Uh, you're listening to AM 1430 WBEV. Uh, also, if you're uh, listening to us on uh, WBEV and want to catch uh, what's going on live on video, you can go to dailydodge.com. Under the video tab, uh, the video will pop up automatically for you here, and uh, we'd love to have you join us on either medium. Uh, we do have to take a break. When we come back, we will. Uh, I should probably let the producer get back into the studio before I uh, before I call for a break. <laughs> We're still learning things here. Uh, Andrew Booker, Sydney Walker, Emma Vickers, Stephanie Giroux. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. Uh, Chris Balyar Mientes. Uh, the the name of the play is Blythe Spirit. Correct. Um, and it is a uh, a play that is going to be on the stage tomorrow for students and seniors at nine thirty. Uh, and then 7.30 on Thursday and Friday of this week. We do have to take a break. We'll be back here in just a few minutes on Community Comment. I love going to the dentist. Hi, this is Dr. Adam Forster from Columbus Family Dental. Our entire staff invites you to our kid-friendly dental clinic. We know how important it is to you and to your child how comfortable they feel going to the dentist. A pleasant, comfortable first dental visit helps build trust. Put your child at ease for future visits. At Columbus Family Dental, we love kids. Call us today at 623-5559 to set up your free, kid-friendly consultation or visit us on the web at columbusfamilydental.com. Find out what's happening on Wall Street every weekday here on AM 1430 WBEV with the Wall Street to Main Street Closing Stock Market Report. The Closing Market Report airs at 520 every Monday through Friday from the offices of your local Edward Jones Investment Advisors in Beaver Dam. Kevin Smith's office delivers the report every Monday and Wednesday. See why Edward Jones Investment Advisors have been ranked among the best advocates for their clients. See Kevin Smith in the Park Village Shopping Center in Beaver Dam. 
volunteers. Think of how much richer our community and lives are because of people who care enough to volunteer. Volunteer to teach Sunday school, coach Little League, join service clubs and organizations, serve on committees and commissions, give blood to the Red Cross. The list is endless. This is Ed Shellen of Columbus with an invitation to volunteers who have served the Columbus community in some way without compensation. Columbus area businesses want to show our appreciation. This year, April 15th through the 21st is National Volunteer Week. On Thursday night, April 19th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the historic Columbus Fireman's Park Pavilion, we're hosting the second Good Neighbor Volunteer Appreciation Event with refreshments, door prizes, and music by the award-winning Mark Croft Trio, free of charge to all Columbus area volunteers. Join us Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fireman's Park Pavilion, and thank you for all you do. So, are you going to see Nana's Naughty Knickers? Does this Nana want her knickers seen? No, it's the new Beaver Dam Area Community Theater production. It's about an enterprising senior citizen lingerie boutique owner who's spending her golden years in a most unorthodox way. Oh, I think I will see Nana's Naughty Knickers. So where does Nana keep her naughty knickers? Oh, under... Under where? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> what? Show dates are April 27th and the 28th and May 3rd, 4th, and 5th at 7.30 p.m. and April 29th and May 6th at 2 p.m. Prices are $10, $15, and $17. When your little sweet law-breaking nanny is your roommate, you learn more than you ever could have guessed about what she's been up to in her golden years. Be sure to get your tickets today online at bdact.org or at Rechex Food Pride in Beaver Dam. Will Nana get arrested or even worse, evicted? Get your tickets today to find out. For the latest local news online anytime for free, log on to dailydodge.com. Brought to you by Vita Park Eye Associates, John Deere Horicon Works, and American Bank. Here's a look at your weather eye forecast powered by weatherology.com. A winter weather advisory begins at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and continues until 7 a.m. Thursday. Mainly cloudy this afternoon with highs around 35. Winds out of the northwest, 8 to 15 miles per hour. Lows level off around 27 tonight. 2 to 4 inches of snow tomorrow through tomorrow night. I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on your hometown station, AM 1430 WBEV. Currently, it's 33. 25 minutes after 1 o'clock from AM 1430 WBEV. Streaming online at dailydodge.com. It is time now for more of today's community comment. Here again is your host, Craig Warmbold. Yeah. Right on Kenzie. Yeah. Looks like we're back here on Community <laughs> Comment. Great. So, so we just like uh, delivering devastating news to one another right before the uh, the segment starts. <laughs> so, uh, Chris uh, Balier Mientes, he is the uh, the one of the directors. Uh, the the I teachers, call myself the assistant. The assistant director uh, for uh, students at Wayland Academy. They got a big play coming up this week. It is called Blythe Spirit. It is on the stage uh, tomorrow at nine thirty for seniors and students, uh, and then Thursday and Friday evening at seven thirty. Uh, students Chris Booker, Sydney Walker, Emma Vickers, and Stephanie Giroux are here with. Chris us Booker. on the and, that's, that'd be my brother uh, Chris Booker what are Andrew Booker <laughs> it's a little bit scary that that's also my brother actually these these are not the easiest names to remember <laughs> so I mean you'll have to excuse me I you've interviewed Chris Booker before yeah. I have oh I've interviewed yeah. your brother before is that right probably what what play would he have been in uh, Zorro no oh. I was Zorro oh you were in Zorro you were Zorro yeah. Zorro I, I wasn't Zorro oh, okay. I was in Zorro that was my oh. freshman play okay All so right. would have been Oh, he, she definitely interviewed Fisher. Probably, um, Fisher. You have another brother named Fisher? No. no. She has a brother named yeah. Fisher. Oh, your brother Fisher was here. So this is like a family thing then. Oh, well, say hi to Fisher for us. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> his, <laughs> An Andrew's brother did theater when he was at Wayland, mm -hmm. and then Sydney's brother is in the show with us as well. Yeah. So they do yes. theater together. And then uh, Emma's brother uh, graduated last year and is majoring in acting um, down in Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. um, wow. And doing very, very well. I think it was on CSI or, or what was the show he was on? Uh, Give me the microphone. The NCIS shows or something. <laughs> he was, he was on, but he, he's had a great. Yeah, he's definitely um, had many acting opportunities in different commercials, and I think yeah, he was in one show. I forgot what it was called though. It was an NCIS, one of those, you know. I don't know. A television yeah. show. Yeah, that's pretty doing, good. Doing, uh, no pressure or anything. <laughs> I hope this made is pretty good though. You know, I mean, you're better. Yeah, uh, so it nice. seems like you got a good group of kids here. We have a great. I always say that about Wayland. We have great kids at Wayland. They're fun to work with. 
Well, except for, well, Ant, I don't know. <laughs> no, just kidding. But he's <laughs> leaving pretty soon yeah, out here he's anyway. Yeah, You so. guys are seniors, the two of you? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is your last play for, uh, in, in high school, I should yeah. say, right? Has it been a good run? I, I mean, he's been here longer than I have, but um, since my sophomore year, yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Is it what uh, what stands out? What's uh, what is are some of the highlights? Would you say of your uh, of your high school theatrical career? I mean, as far as what specifically, just I mean, the people are always great, as as Miss Mancho was kind of saying. Um, I mean, I think definitely what we can do with we don't necessarily have a large like budget or a theater department, so just the shows that we are able to put on and, and how much dedication there is from everybody to putting on the shows that we have is really fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah. Sydney, what has the, the theater opportunities meant to you in your high school career? Um, I've definitely used them as kind of an opportunity to get out of my shell and then be able to participate. And I think it's kind of nice that we're doing Blythe Spirit because this was um, one of the first plays that I've ever, I had ever seen as a professional production at American Players Theater. Really? Um, and so when I was probably... Um, 10 to 12, that was like the first uh, play I saw, and I thought it was probably one of the coolest things and decided I wanted to get into it. Um, and ever since then, I've been doing different camps and got involved in high school, and so it's really nice uh, closure, I guess I would say, just wow. having all the opportunities kind of come together. That's amazing. Did When you heard that Blight Spirit was going to be the spring play, was there a character that you said, I want to be the dead person? Was, was there somebody um, like that? I, you always are pining for the lead, even though um, like there are no unimportant parts. There are small parts, and anybody who says otherwise is lying. Um, but there are always important parts, so it doesn't matter what you get, but it's always nice to um, close out with a part that you were looking forward to. Yeah, and again, full circle being something that mm -hmm. you had seen as a, a child at uh, Spring Green, and now you're able to bring it to the stage yes. over here. Uh, and we've got two uh, underclassmen uh, that are, are with us as well. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Stephanie, you are a... I'm a junior. You're a junior. Okay, you've been yeah. in a few plays already? Um, yeah, um, I actually, this is my first year at Wayland. I um, just moved here from Columbus. And uh, in Columbus, I had acted in musicals, but never plays. And the first play that I was actually in was um, the fall play, which was Arsenic and Old Lace. And so this would be my second one. Okay. The, the first play you've ever been in? Yep. What, yeah. what drew, drew you to the theater? Um, <laughs> well, Mr. Mantis, of course. But um, for me, I am very, I love the fine arts department altogether. And um, musicals like was the perfect combination of both singing and acting. And when I heard that um, Wayland offered plays, it was a really nice opportunity for me to like get out of my comfort zone, see if I can act without having to sing and that. So it was a really nice experience. And um, altogether, I think it has helped me build my personality and who I am, especially at, Way at Wayland and setting a foundation. And I think the fine arts slash theater department has really helped me with that. And, and you've got one more year yet, uh, left. Are you yeah. going to uh, try out for another play next year? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Excellent. Very good. Uh, Emma, uh, you are uh, the youngest member of the group here, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, sir. Uh, you are a? I'm a freshman. You're a freshman. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Now, are you from the area? Um, no, I'm actually from Minocqua, Wisconsin. Okay. So up All north. right. Is there, did you have an opportunity uh, in Minocqua to do any theater before coming to high school? Um. Not very many opportunities came up. Um, we have many um, camps for it, and I have done um, a thing with my grandmother. She's she loves doing like readers theaters in her um, community plays and everything. Oh, um, great. I've attended many camps like that, um, but there haven't really been many opportunities back home to actually perform. So this was a really good opportunity here. So is this your first play, your second play? This is my first play. This is your first play. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, uh, you're you uh, here now on the radio or TV <laughs> or wherever we're at right, <laughs> right now. Uh, how's the experience been for you so far? It's been, not to sound cheesy, but it's been amazing. Really? Mm -hmm. what, 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 have, what has been the highlight for you, would you say? I would say just being able to show what I can do. I don't. Like this is the first time that I've really performed, and at um, uh, tryouts, I really showed. I like try. I um, tried out for all the parts, so I had to act like the crazy medium. I had act like the um, angry ex-wife. I had to do all these things, <laughs> and it was the first time that I really, kind of, really came out of my shell and showed all these emotions I could portray, and it was 
just something I had a lot of fun with. Did you guys have to do all the parts too? Did you have to do the crazy ex-wife and all that? I'm sorry, well, the, oh, the course, dead first probably. wife. Right? <laughs> I think I may have actually done that. I think you did. <laughs> so, Now, is this something you think you might uh, pursue again in your high school career? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, it is Blythe Spirit. The students at Wayland Academy are putting it on this weekend. No, I'm sorry. Not this weekend. This week. Mm-hmm. Uh, tomorrow, there's a 9.30 show uh, that's open to students and seniors, and then 7.30 on Thursday and Friday. Uh, all right, if we would, uh, let's go around the table and have you guys uh, make a pitch to our listeners. Uh, and you guys know how this works. You've, you've done this before. So we'll let the seniors start, and then we'll, we'll wrap it around to the underclassmen, if you will. So, uh, Andrew. Not Chris, but Andrew, if you would. Uh, Mr. Booker, uh, tell us why our listeners should make it a point to go see Blythe Spirit uh, on Thursday or Friday at 7.30 at the Lindsay Auditorium. I mean, to start, if you look outside your windows, it's not the greatest weather. You might as well come out and sit inside and watch a wonderful show. So you got to do something to enjoy the time. Um, but also, it's, it's definitely very funny. A um, couple of different turns of events. So I guess I probably shouldn't say too much else. I'll leave some of the random things that other people can say. So, uh, yeah, there's been no spoilers here today. That's the one thing we could pride ourselves on. Absolutely nobody should have an idea of what's coming up in the show <laughs> after listening to the, uh, the program as today. As long as it's not snow. As long as it's not snow, it's true. Uh, Sydney? Uh, I'd say it's a funny show. We've put a lot of hard work into it, and um, it usually always comes together. So <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to scare Mr. Mientis over there. Your confidence but, uh, is overwhelming. <laughs> No pressure. No, it always it always comes together. It always is a great show, especially on our um, opening nights. Our Friday night shows are always a lot of fun. It's usually full, and you can meet a lot of different people from the community as well while you're there. Well, fantastic. Thank you, Sydney. Uh, Emma? Um, it's, like they've said before, it's a really good show. Uh, <laughs> um, it, I can guarantee it will make you laugh at least some of the, t- some of the time. I mean... There's screaming, there's throwing things, there's a lot of fun stuff that I think you'd enjoy watching because we're definitely having fun doing it. The, on the stage, the screaming and the, yes, uh, yes, not yes. In, <laughs> in the audience. So just uh, we don't want to give anybody the wrong idea. Very uh, true. Stephanie, if you would, your final thoughts. Um, I think the show has um, been, first off, a really amazing experience getting to. Um, for all of us to get, like getting to play parts that somewhat are identical to our personalities, but at the same time, not really. But also, if you're looking for a good laugh on a Thursday or Friday night, I think Blythe Spirit is the way to go. Um, you'll definitely find yourself laughing a few times. As Emma said, there's a lot of jokes that um, I know maybe some people won't get, but some will. So, yeah, I think it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, very good. Uh, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Chris, uh, again, it seems like you got a great group of kids here and a wonderful cast that you put together. It's a yeah, wonderful cast, and I, I really can't take all the credit. Martha Kessler has been awesome to work with. I've learned a lot from her this year. Um, she really knows her stuff. She has good vision when she chooses a show to put everything together. She's teaching right now, so that's why she couldn't be here, too. Um, <clears throat> I think this community offers a a great variety of theater um, between Beaver Dam Community Theater, the high school, and Wayland. You can really fill your your year up with seeing some great shows, and they're not expensive. I mean, for for less than you pay to go see a movie, you can come and see a lot of these shows. And so get out, support your local community theaters and your community productions, and just, you know, try something new. You know, try to see a show that you maybe never heard of, Life Spirit. It wasn't one I had heard of until we, we put it up you know, started putting it together. So come on out and support us. We'll have snacks, we'll have, and we'll have a good time. All right. Uh, again, that is Blythe Spirit. It is tomorrow at 930 for students and seniors. And then the public is invited to two shows Thursday and Friday at 730. The ticket price is? I, I believe it's $7. Okay. It's, it's either 7 or 8 I can't remember. Wayland Academy's Lindsay Auditorium. Lindsay Auditorium. They can park on the Circle Driveway um, on North University, on Prospect Franklin. There's a parking lot um, entrance from Franklin Street, anywhere they can find parking. It's down at the Field House uh, on the corner of uh, South University and Park Ave. They can always park there as well. Free parking, obviously. Your high school isn't the one that's under major reconstruction right now. That's the easier one to find you're of right. the two, I would you're have to say. You're right. Uh, again, Blythe Spirit. Uh, more information, anything online that we might be able to, Facebook or anything I believe we should be aware of? Our, um, I believe on the Wayland um, Facebook page, they'll have uh, announcements, um, of, uh, what do you call it, an event. Uh-huh. Wayland, and there, it's also on our fine arts calendar, which is on our, our Wayland website. 
Fantastic. I want to thank our guests for joining us once again on the program today. Andrew Booker, uh, Sydney Walker, uh, seniors, uh, thanks for uh, coming and joining thanks us in previous years. Uh, uh, we, we do uh, wish you the best in your future endeavors. Uh, Emma Vickers and Stephanie Giroux are uh, a, a freshman and a junior. And uh, Chris, I hope you bring them back next year. Okay. All right. Very good. Uh, we do hope to see you guys again uh, in in future years, and we wish all four of you the best of luck. And Chris, it's been uh, it's been wonderful. Thanks for bringing the kids, and uh, we'll look forward to the next conversation with the Wayland Theater students. Uh, that's going to do it for today's community comment.